Hey guys, this is Tank Colbert, Colbert Tech Repair, and I'm missing my hat, but I'm going to be giving you guys a overview of a motherboard and how to install its components. Stay tuned. Now, this is the Gigabyte um, 990FX UD3 motherboard. It is a used motherboard. It was the motherboard that I was using before I switched to my ASUS. Now, what I'm going to show you first is how to install a CPU into a CPU socket. Now, all you have to do here is lift up this little lever and on the bottom of your CPU you can see there is an arrow right there. Make sure you do not touch the pins on the bottom of the CPU because that can damage it. All you have to do is line up that arrow on your CPU to the arrow on your socket which is right there in the left hand corner. And you just put the lever down and lock it into place and you have now installed your first CPU. Now, I'm going to show you how to install the RAM. Right here, I have two sticks of Alpita 2GB RAM. RAM is very easy to install. All you have to do is check with your motherboard to see how dual channel works. Now, what dual channel does is it runs the memory in sync with each other. So when you're installing your memory module, you check to see that the bottoms match up. You press it on both sides until you hear that click, such as that. And then since this board uses dual channel in slots 1 and 3, you just place it in there, make sure it's set down tight, and press down until you hear the click. Now, I do not have a very high quality graphics card for this build. Uh, my graphics card is in my build, in my main build right now. So I'm using an old Asus GTX G10. Now with your graphics card, the installation is very simple. On the back of the card, it has your ports for your DVI, your HDMI, and your VGA, and those ports always face out. Now here we have, right here you can see on the board, it says PCI EX16. So that is your 16 speed graphics slot. So all you have to do is take your graphics card, put it in the slot, and press down until it clicks. As you can see, it's not going anywhere. And since this graphics card is so old it does not need an external power connection but most of the time for your graphics cards you will have external PCIe gra er, power that runs from your power supply either an 8 pin or a 6 pin this in this case this is a 6 pin that you can make or an 8 pin that you can make into a 6 pin and it would run into the top you have the power supply, either one or two. Now, what I'm going to show you to do is how to install an aftermarket cooler. So, I have right here the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. What you would do is you would get thermal paste, right? and there are there's different terminology on what to do here but most time you just want a little dab of thermal paste about the size of a grain of rice or a little bit bigger and what most people do is get something like a credit card or a business card wherever you have and try to get it to spread out evenly now we have our thermal paste spread and all you have to do every every cooler will sit on differently this one I had to install a custom back plate onto the motherboard with these holes in. So you would just gently set the cooler down onto your motherboard, in this case with the Evo, and make sure the screws line up with the ports on the motherboard.
you just screw them in. I'm not going to do that here because I'm going to do it in time. But whatever you do, you make sure to screw in in a star pattern evenly. You do not want one side of the power of the CPU to have more force on it than the other. So now that you have that installed, you're pretty much done besides power. Now, what I have here is a power supply. This is the Thermaltake 850 watt power supply. This would probably be overkill for your first system, but I will show you what to do. This here is a 24 pin motherboard power connector. As you can see here, we have a 24 pin port. So all you have to do is just plug it right in. until it snaps into place. Now secondly what you have on most motherboards is your CPU power. On this particular motherboard, as you can see there, it has two four pin CPU power connectors. So you just plug those in. and your main system power is now ready to go. Now, you would also still have to hook up your front panel connections, which is your reset switch and your power switch, and you would have to hook up your USB hubs to be able to run USB, also for your HD audio. And then if you ran hard drives, which you pretty much have to for an operating system, you would run those into the SATA ports. There are six SATA ports. Usually the ones on the right are run by the onboard controller and the ones on the left being ran by the motherboard's controller. I would always recommend using the ones on the right. And with those you would use your provided SATA cables. Okay, now whenever you're ready to mount the motherboard into your system you will find these risers. They have little holes in the top and threads on the bottom. You will thread these into the bottom of your case. The risers would be sitting underneath these holes right here. And then you would simply just take your screws and screw them in, in as, as much of an evenly pa pattern as possible. And here the motherboard screws usually have a grooved surface on the bottom to make sure that they make good contact and do not fry the motherboard. Alright guys, well I hope this has helped you understand how to install parts on the motherboard a little bit easier. I hope in the near future I will have a better setup. I plan on having a test bench coming within about a week or so so that I can test all kinds of new components, but this is just an e a video. I've had some questions of some old parts I had laying around. Alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the video.